Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be looking at part 3 of our Inspired By series by Nick Bantock and we're going to be putting all the pieces that we've created so far together. So I'm starting my Dina Wakeley journal and I'm painting one of the craft pages with the night paint which is a beautiful navy colour. And this is a schminky gold powder, which I bought in Glasgow years and years ago. And I'm honestly not sure what it's made for, but it just it has the most beautiful metallic shine, which you can see here. And dropping it into the wet paint adheres it. It, it doesn't rub off when you do it. And it's not a mica powder, so I'm, I'm really not 100% sure what it is. But if you ever find some, get it, because it's amazing. The image that I'm putting behind here, I'm cutting out a window and you briefly saw the picture of the, the lady there, is a very special to me. Um, the lady who drew that died about five years ago. Um, she's like my surrogate grandmother, and her husband gave me a whole heap of her art materials to use up watercolour papers and so on. And, and one of her watercolour sketchbooks, I came across this amazing sketch of this beautiful woman. And... I just don't know how to use it. I want to frame the original, but I thought, no, I, I need to have that somewhere where I can see it. Um, and it just had such a serene look on the face. I wanted to put it into this spread. It just worked perfectly. So what I'm doing is I've used some uh, scrapbooking material, uh, paper, sorry, and I ran it through the Xyron, which is what that um, plasticky paper on the back of it looks like, which is a, like puts double-sided tape over the entire page. Uh, I did silly, sillily glue it all down first before realising I hadn't put the um, vellum into there, so I had to peel it back up again so I could pop the image of the woman back in again. So um, what I'm going to do in this spread is basically create about a six-page spread, three-page spread, with lots of different elements in it. Now this is all inspired by the artwork of Nick Bantock and if you go back to the very first video in the series um, which is making the male art, I go through and show you some images from his books but I would suggest that you go and have a look at his, his artwork, particularly this um, page or the pages that I'm doing is inspired by his work in the books Griffin and Sabine and the follow up books that came with it. The basics of it is that he created um, a book for adults which had postcards and envelopes and the envelopes you could open and it had letters in them and you pulled them out and they're all handwritten by the author um, and he uses um, when I did some research on him he talked about when he wrote from Griffin and Sabine's point of view, he actually had a table and a pe special pen and a special setup for Griffin, and he had a completely different table, a complete different setup, and a completely different pen for Sabine. So he got different handwriting for the different characters in his book. What I'm doing here is creating a collage for the back of the book because what I want it to be like is when you open up the page, um, you've got the window on top and it's like going through a box of stuff um, and let, old letters and postage stamps and so on. And this is kind of like the base of the box, all the different leftover bits at the bottom. What I loved about this project is I have had lots and lots of these collage pieces sitting in my stash for over 15 years. And they're pieces that I've loved, but I've never being courageous enough to use them and I thought in this spread because I it was working the way I wanted it to and I knew it was going to be very special that I thought why not use these pieces that you've been hoarding for so long and have them in something beautiful that you know you're going to go back and look at. So for example the, the book that I've got there I collected it at an old estate sale it's handwritten poetry from um, an, a person in the late 1800s, early 1900s, um, and his sort of poetry, love poetry and so on, and letters he's written to people. And at the back of the book, it obviously wasn't finished, and you've got these beautiful aged pages. And I could keep them hidden away, but by having them out, I think sometimes honours the fact um, that someone has taken the time and care to use them. And I'm taking time and care to use them in something special as well. Uh, it's 
it's a hard line to tread and sometimes I feel a bit funny about it but then I think well if I didn't use them where would they be would they end up in the trash so I don't know how you feel about that that's that's how I feel when I come across particularly special stuff like that with collage elements so what I'm doing is I'm creating just sort of a border and these are going to end up being the flaps where the postcards and the envelopes that I've got are going to sit um, and you can see here what I'm starting to do is measure out where I'm going to cut these things now I've because I was working intuitively with this uh, I glued stuff down and then had to lift them up to re-glue stuff underneath it. If you had a bit more time and patience, you could probably actually work out where you needed to glue things down beforehand so you didn't have to do that step. I'm also using the red liner tape to tape this down. It's a really heavy duty double sided tape. It's very, very sticky. Um, so I know that things are going to be secure if I use that to, to glue them down. So you can sort of see all my flaps starting to come together. Um, what I've left out of this video is me actually handwriting the, the postcards that I've got in the background. Um, and I will put the text that I wrote um, into the description of this video. It's using the characters from the Griffin and Sabine books, but I've sort of written the lost correspondent. And I have to say, I loved doing it. There was something so magical. It was a really rainy night when I was doing it. And there's just something about handwriting a letter again. I haven't done it in so long, and it made me think what a forgotten art it is. And like Nick Bantock when he did his artwork, um, I tried to use a different font for each of the letters. I tried to cheat um, and I actually typed it all up and had two different fonts and tried to look, make it look really good on the computer and of course my computer wasn't playing with me and every time I printed it out, it would print out the, the greeting in the font that I'd chosen and then the rest of it would just be in a very plain boring font and it looked ridiculous. And after trying to do it about four times I just gave up and decided to handwrite them. So, but I'm really glad I did because it made me connect with the project even more. Now the green board that you can see that I'm using there is just like using as a cutting mat um, and please use a cutting mat in between. I have tried to do this occasionally in the past and forgotten and cut into another page. So it is handy to have one. This is a just an Ikea um, cutting mat that I cut in half and it fits into my journal perfectly. So just to do bits and pieces like this. So as I was working, sort of trying to make sure the flaps kind of work together, you can see the peeking, the collage peeking out from behind. Um, and that was really important to make it look like a really full box. What I'm doing now is when I did the glassine envelope at the top with the faux postage on it, I actually cut the envelope um, so it was loose. But I thought by using this washi and colouring it the way I did, it kind of reminded me of the old um, airmail. Post, uh, envelopes that you used to be able to get and I really like how that sort of pulled it together and it finished it off and made sure that it didn't fall out. Now if you're interested in the collage uh, materials that I've got and the stamps that I've used in the very first video I did in the series, um, part one where I was making the postcards, I do go through and show some images from the Nick Bantock books and I show the stamps and um, collage bits and pieces I pulled out before I started the project uh, so you've got an idea of the sort of things that I had on hand to do this. I've found when I'm doing big projects like this which are very particular in a very particular style I find it a lot easier if I begin the process by actually collecting all that stuff. I may not use any of it or I may use one or two pieces of it but just by having it on hand means I'm not searching for it when I'm sort of in the moment and thinking oh yeah I need to do that. So now I'm going back to the very first page and the girl needed a, a border put around her so I had that Stampers Anonymous frame and I just cut it up into different parts and I really liked how it went and I used an old book page to do to stamp onto the um, page from the handwritten book that you could see. On the front I'm also using one of the faux postage uh, 
stamps that I made and that was in part two of the, the videos if you haven't seen um, how that goes together and obviously you can sort of see the image and see through to what's behind so it sort of gives you that ethereal you know curiosity of what what's being hidden here I've um, again used kind of the style of the book it has a little bit of a preface preface sorry of you know what the book's about or where it's come from so I've called it the lost correspondence of Griffin and Sabine said that it's who it's inspired by and the little paragraphs there are sort of giving a bit of a backstory to where these things have come from so basically sort of saying that once this box was found this box of stuff was found nothing was ever heard of Griffin and Sabine again so using the characters from Nick Bantock but taking them on my own little journey. So this is the final flip through of the entire project. And I'm, I have to say, I'm really, really proud of it. And it, it really does remind me looking at it of Nick Bantock and his work. Um, and I hope it reminds you of it. It was just a really fun project to do. The postcards in themselves are just such a simple, easy thing to do that you could, I did four within an hour, I think. And it's something you could send out to friends really easily. The faux seal, which is in the second video, again, using your embossing powders in a different way. And if, if you were doing invites to something um, for a wedding, for example, it's a really quick and easy way to make lots of seals instead of having to buy lots and lots. It's a great way to use up all the bits and pieces that you've got around. And if you are a writer or enjoy writing stories, what a great way to put your own, to be an author and create your own story. Um, in short, sharp four postcards, create something magical and mystical. So I hope you enjoyed this series. I really hope that you go and explore the artwork of Nick Bantock and his beautiful collages. And if you come across the Griffin and Sabine books, to um, have a look at them as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell to get notified when I upload again. I will see you next time. Bye.